It's been a few weeks, and uh, yeah, the uh, the damage is continuing. Okay. All right, well, look, look. Anheuser Bush. Oh my God. Anheuser Bush. Anheuser Bush. Oh, that's Coors Light. <laughs> yeah, not Anheuser Bush. And that. Oh my God. They had Walmart move their products right to the front entrance of Walmart. Walmart. And look, and look, and look, right by the cups, not a single package. What's up, guys? John Claymore here, and I figured we would uh, check in on Bud Light or Anheuser-Busch and see how they're doing. And as you guys can see, they're not doing very well, according to uh, these headlines and these uh, articles here that are about to be rolled across your screen. Now, guys, if you want to... Uh, pause the video and actually read them i advise you guys do so i would really appreciate it if you did that because uh you guys know me i typically tend to paraphrase and uh, when i do read articles it's normally behind the computer itself still trying to figure out how to edit certain things in and edit certain things while i talk also something else too normally i'm relatively busy during the day so therefore at the same time uh yeah i'm pretty sure you guys kind of know where i'm coming at with that but as you guys are seeing anheuser Bush is not doing very well and it seems to me that the beer of choice that people are choosing at this moment in time is not really Coors, but actually Modelo Especial. Uh, guys, uh, Modelo um, is actually owned by Anheuser-Busch. It's sold internationally, as you guys are seeing, but it's actually owned by Anheuser-Busch. I just figured I would throw that out there. Maybe you guys might want to go to uh, Coors or maybe Yingling or something like that if you've still got the boycott going on. Now, there are a couple of things I do want to discuss here. And, of course, it's for the most part this ad, which I cannot actually play with the volume on because of the music that's in it. But, yeah, Bud Light figured that they would try to turn things around. They've been in kind of a panic here recently of how to get their followers back, how to get their customers back, how to get people to drink their product again. And I'm here to tell you right now that it's not going to happen anytime soon unless you come out and actually deliver some form of an apology but don't worry we'll get to that more towards the end of the video of course i've touched that before and i've touched that in these videos here but um that person that we're not allowed to speak about here on the platform that person who by the way if we mention our videos get blocked had this here to say offline for a few weeks and a lot has been said about me some of which is so far from my truth that I was like hearing my name and I didn't even know who they were talking about sometimes. It's a very disassociative feeling. And it was so loud that I didn't even feel part of the conversation. So I decided to take the back seat and just let them tucker themselves out. I think it's okay to be frustrated with someone or confused, but what I'm struggling to understand is the need to dehumanize and to be cruel. I just, I don't think that's right. You know, dehumanization has never fixed anything in history, ever. What I'm interested in is getting back to making people laugh and to never stop learning and going forward. I want to share parts of myself on here that have nothing to do with my identity. And I'm hoping those parts will still be exciting to you and will be enough. And your parts are obviously still in place. I, I, I don't want to hear anything about identity or anything like that. They're really, really funny story, though. And we'll be covering this in the next video. Uh, a guy uh, won a poker tournament, an all-woman poker tournament at the uh, Tampa Hard Rock, the Seminole Hard Rock down in Tampa, Florida. I've been to that Hard Rock a few times. Very, very nice uh, very nice hotel, nice gambling, all that type of stuff there. Good food, all that good stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that a little bit later on in the next video. But still, this whole your truth, my truth thing, this prayer has got to freaking stop. There's only one thing that's, that, that, that ascertains truth, or is that, that it is truth, and that is the truth itself. I know I'm kind of stuttering getting that out, but please bear with me. Look, here's the real truth. We've boycotted Anheuser-Busch, and if you guys want to continue to boycott, please do. I think this company obviously needs a lesson taught to them. They need to learn things the hard way, but the fact of the matter is this moment in time, it doesn't look to me like they're going to learn anytime soon. So if you guys, like I said, if you guys want to keep it up, hey, rock on, keep going, keep on rocking in the free world, keep boycotting this company if you guys want to. As I've said before, go buy a local, go buy a Yingling. They're an actual American beer company. Of course, uh, Anheuser-Busch has gone completely global. And obviously, they're spreading the woke message. And of course, as I mentioned before, Modelo Especial is being ran by the international wing of Anheuser-Busch. But still, the thing is this right here. Anheuser-Busch used to be a great American company. Still is in a lot of ways. But the thing is this right here. As I mentioned in previous videos, we should have seen their woke turn a long time ago, especially when they started bringing in uh, Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen. Just don't. 
don't even get me started on the whole shtick. Of course, we got the self censor here. But the thing is this right here. In the case of Bud Light and Budweiser, they used to do really, really funny commercials. They used to do really, really good stuff. They also used to be very, very pro-veteran. I don't know if they still are or not. I haven't really checked in with their salute, the uh, Heroes program. Of course, it's probably been a while. But I remember when I got back home from two, in 2006 from my second deployment, uh, family had gotten me tickets to go to Bud Bush Gardens the very next spring. It was a part of the Salute the Heroes project where you got a bit of a, I think it was a discount off your ticket is what it was. So, of course, you go to Bush Gardens, you basically have a good old time. About the fourth or fifth time I've been to Bush Gardens in my life. At least that was the Williamsburg location in Virginia. I never actually got to go to the Tampa location, even though I've been to Tampa on several occasions. I just uh, bypassed and all the way to the Summer Hard Rock when I would go down there. Don't worry, we'll talk about that more in the next video. Fact of the matter is that Anheuser Busch used to stand for something. So when you see this woke turn, it makes you think to yourself, okay, what do they stand for now? And even though they've removed a lot of the people who are at least for the time being, they probably trying to figure out what they're going to do next. It makes you wonder if these people are ever going to learn. You see, they put these commercials out, and I don't know why they put the commercials out. What you should have done from the very start was that you should have just came on out and you should have apologized. That's what you should have actually done. You should have came out here and said, look, man, we screwed things up. We effed up. We should not have put this individual out here. We understand that this person is the reason why you chose not to buy our product, okay? You're looking at a massive net loss. A lot of people did not think this open boycott was going to work. I personally, at first, did not think it was going to work either. I said basically do it silently. It looks to me like most people did do it silently, but obviously the online boycott got this entire thing rolling. Maybe Anheuser-Busch will learn their lesson from this. I hope and pray that they do because at one point in time, it was in fact a great American company. As I said, I think in a previous video, I think the idea was to try to make Budweiser more patriotic and Bud Light the more woke brand, but obviously nobody likes the wokeness. Nobody likes to look at that person. Nobody likes to look at someone pretending to be a woman nobody likes to look at mental illness okay nobody wants to look at that and obviously nobody wants to drink a product like that because obviously what it actually preaches and what it actually stands for as i've said before we have no idea what anheuser-busch really and truly stands for of course we have an idea that they don't stand for patriotic american values anymore it seems to me that maybe they stand for the whole esg thing it's and when you suddenly start to be a little bit preachy or you start to get a little bit political, after a while, people are just going to say, screw this right here. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe in what you stand for. They say, look, please don't make my beer political. I mean, it's just the way that it is. Go back to what I have said about sports. And I can already hear somebody saying, well, they weren't being political with this. Well, they kind of in a way were with the whole woke stuff. All right, when you put an individual out there to market your brand, that tells us that you care more about that than you actually do the consumer. Now, really quick, it's one thing for sports to preach a message. You see, after a while, for whatever reason, people kind of get numb and they kind of get desensitized by sports because people at the end of the day need some form of entertainment. However, when it comes to beer or an actual product, which by the way, I still suggest that a lot of Republican politicians, they at least vet these people out next time before they take money from them because then after a while, people are going to say, you know what, screw this right here. We're not going to vote or support for somebody who, uh, who takes money from these people. Also Democrats too. But then again, though, the Democrats are going completely woke, so I guess it doesn't matter to them. Fact of the matter is that people do not want politics injected in anything. Do you guys remember when Goya basically got, uh, they, didn't a, they didn't get a boycott. They actually got the exact opposite. What happened was is that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, she went after Goya because the Goya CEO was voting for Donald Trump. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people went out who had never tried Goya before, and they immediately started buying their product. That, of course, was the inverse. This situation has probably skyrocketed a lot of the people. Like I said before, a lot of people are now drinking Coors, and they've kind of sort of gone back to Miller, which, by the way, is something that I wanted to address earlier. Miller and Coors also did the inclusionary woke thing, Okay, they obviously did this entire thing as well. The difference was is that um, a lot of people figured out what was going on and they said no and their overall money, their overall stock itself kind of went down a little bit. But after a while, they kind of sort of denounced that to a certain extent. But, but, but give it about a month and a half because June is on its way. And of course, you're going to have the whole Pride Month thing. And I have absolutely no idea how, how, how much further they're going to go, especially now with Juneteenth being a national holiday. Really quick, about Juneteenth, and I don't mean to go too far off the rails here, but I personally think that Juneteenth is an opportunity for the, uh, how do I say, the retail world 
to cash in. Here's a new sale on Juneteenth. Oh, here's a Juneteenth sale. Here's, I mean, basically just another marketing ploy is what the hell it is. I'm not saying that all holidays are, but I mean, if you're about to go to a bad economy and you've got what I, <laughs> how would I say, um, you've got a situation now where a couple of banks that donated to the Democratic Party, SVB, First Republic, they just had their assets seized or they had their assets bought out by another bigger bank like J.P. Morgan. Yes, yeah, some very, very tough days are coming. So obviously you need to keep consumers out there buying the product. So be aware of that because you're probably going to see some sales here in the next six or seven weeks. And I just got to wonder, would Miller and would Coors make the mistake of doing something like what Anheuser-Busch did? I'm just, I'm just curious if they would actually do that. My money is saying no, they would not do that because obviously they don't want to experience the backlash that uh, Anheuser-Busch obviously suffered. But then again, though, we don't really truly know yet. So at this point in time, nothing these corporations do surprises me. Obviously, they're now more interested in preaching the woke agenda. As I've said, even though Bud Light thought that they weren't being political with this, they obviously, to a certain extent, were being, political, uh, being a little bit political about this, whether it be direct or indirect is essentially what I'm saying. And this is quite frankly sad because... Anheuser-Busch, like I said, was a great American company, still is in a lot of ways, but then again, though, when you decide to stand for this type of stuff right here instead of standing for patriotism and American values, I mean, what the hell do you expect? Especially given the fact that your consumer base is mostly working class males, working class families, good old fashioned rednecks like myself. Of course, the people that they call uneducated and a bunch of ribs. Yeah, you know, we're actually the chief buyer of your product. Probably was not a good idea to piss us off. Which brings me to my final point. And of course, I know that I've said this at least two or three times already. If you guys at Anheuser-Busch had simply just came out and apologized and denounced this individual, this entire thing probably would have been avoided. It probably would have been completely averted. If you'd have actually done that, if you'd have actually came out here and gave us an actual sincere apology telling us that you screwed up, then this right here more than likely would never have occurred. Makes you wonder exactly how much further it's going to fall. But then again, though, guys, we'll see. Guys, John Claymore here. If you guys like this content, please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign up in the comment section. And uh, happy hump day. Hopefully the rest of your week works out for you guys later on.